Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Kyle Otto. I'm the campus pastor here at Waverly Gardens. And I'd like to, to welcome you to this Tenebrae service of shadows on this Good Friday of Holy Week. Tenebrae goes back to medieval times in monasteries as a solemn time of prolonged meditation on Christ's suffering. Traditionally, it was an afternoon service on Monday Thursday or Good Friday. And tenebrae means darkness or shadows, which is why we're here in darkness with only the light of candles and uh, reading light to illuminate our presence here. And it symbolizes the darkness of Christ's judgment, crucifixion, and death. It consists of scripture readings from the Passion, each followed by a choir response and the extinguishing of candles, until final, finally the Christ candle, which is before me, is removed, representing Christ's death, that the light of the world went out into darkness. The Christ candle is then restored at the end as a symbolic a gesture of hope, of our hope, of the resurrection. And we will follow the series of readings and hymns in the ancient tradition of leaving in silence. And so, though we're not to, together and gathered in person to leave together, I invite you now to, to dim your lights at home and to please remain in silence until the chapel is vacant. Forgetting not that we are focused together during this time of silence in remembrance of our Lord as a people united in his death. Let us approach God together in this time of worship and remembrance. And I invite you to follow the responses on your screen as they appear. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God, who redeems us from sin and death. For us and for our salvation, Christ became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now I invite you to join me in singing hymn number 48 in our hymnals, Nothing But the Blood, and just the first verse for this first time. We'll sing a piece of it later at the end as well. Please join me in singing Nothing But the Blood. And now, please bow your heads with me from where you're at, and we will pray together and invite God into this time. God, our Father, maker of heaven and earth, and God and Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, this privilege to meditate, reflect on the sacrifice that you gave us almost 2,000 years ago of your own life, Lord through your death on the cross and your burial unto death. Lord, we want to commit this time to you and reflect in true worship and thanksgiving and meditation upon the magnitude of what you did for us that we could not do for ourselves, that through your suffering and sacrifice we might have life. So, Lord, we invite you to speak to us this afternoon as we reflect this somber Good Friday in this tenebrae service of shadows. Lord, may you be present. We invite you, Holy Spirit, as the God who lives within us, 
the God who is present with us at all times and all places, we welcome you. We ask you to speak to us, each personally from wherever we're at. Unite us in our hearts and spirits as we are united in one spirit and one Lord and one God our Father, through Jesus Christ. So be with us. We commit this time to you. We love you. We desire you. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. It is significant that this week was predicted by CNN and other news sources to be a dark week, the worst week for the United States for victims of the coronavirus. It is a time of intense suffering for our whole nation and indeed our world. It presents to us a unique perspective, not often paralleled in history, in which the whole world connected by social media technology is aware of and deeply affected by the common suffering of mankind. Surely it cannot escape our notice that it centers around Holy Week and the passion of Christ when our Lord who entered the world to die for our sin, to bear the dreadful curse in the earth, the only innocent man to breathe, was killed for crimes he did not commit. God, in his wisdom, may be using this to get our attention and imprint a holy week in our history and our memory that we won't soon forget, in which we have identified in this way with Christ's own suffering. This is the fellowship of Christ's sufferings. And yet, for all of the tragic death we are seeing today, there is no greater tragedy than the death of our Lord. As Paul said, we have crucified the Lord of glory. We have crucified the Lord of glory. The precious Lamb of God and the champion, Son of Righteousness, was executed. A cruel death of unimaginable agony, whose heart broke for, for his people with love for his people in need of a shepherd. Yet his suffering was not upon the cross alone. When it is finished, he cried, he meant not only the six hours spent hanging nailed to a rugged beam of wood while his life drained away, nor even the years of his ministry or life on earth, but the plan of salvation was declared by God before the world was made. Revelation chapter 13 says the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. The Son of God knew always that he would walk the road to Calvary before the world was formed, and heavily upon him did it weigh. Through all the years in the wilderness with Israel amidst their rebellion, he bore their, their sin and their shame as the angel of the Lord, the pre-incarnate Christ, and in all their affliction he too was afflicted and carried them all the days of old. Isaiah chapter 63. He was with them even then. And finally, when his people abandoned him, he knew the sting of betrayal by the ones he loved and had saved. All the while, it was him. Through all the years, Christ alone carried our pain and sorrows. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah chapter 53. During his passion and upon the cross, Jesus endured every form of abuse possible for a human to suffer. Beyond the physical torture, of Roman crucifixion, one of the most heinous forms of execution conceived by man, he endured great emotional abuse as well by his betrayal and denial by those who professed to love him. And trauma, the trauma of a mental, mental abuse as insults 
were hurled at him even while he suffered torture and emotional loss. Character assassination he also suffered, which is a deliberate effort to damage one's reputation or credibility. Those who accused him falsely and taunted him to come down from the cross if you are really the son of God. Finally, he was abandoned by his own father who turned his face away because he could no longer look upon the sin of man on his son. He was absolutely abandoned and abused in every way at once. And through the centuries of dwelling with his people, providing for them, fighting for them, blessing and loving them, he endured all of their sin and abuse of every kind, every for every sin of his people and for the whole world. All the wickedness and selfishness was done to him. Like a parent who feels the pain of a child's mistakes and grieves as it hurts to see what they've chosen, Christ wept not only at Lazarus' tomb, but every time the father's children left him bitterly. And still he endured their sin. He endured when the disciples fled and left him at his arrest. And his own best friend denied even knowing him. Peter watched as they hammered seven-inch iron nails into his wrists and heels, remembering how he had denied and forsaken him. We might wonder why only Judas hung himself. Still, Jesus endured his sin and loved him. Through the Saturday that followed, birds sang in the spring, as they will tomorrow. The world went on while the Savior lay in the earth. And Peter had time to think, to wonder what was going to happen next. And in the silence and stillness, he had time to realize he had denied his beloved Lord, his dear friend, to his death. How Peter must have agonized over those words he spoke as we would languish over the, a betrayal of our own. And yet Jesus endured Peter's denial and his disciples' abandonment. He endured their abandonment and betrayal and every sin that they committed. When the Revolutionary War General Benedict Arnold betrayed George Washington and the American Revolution to America's British enemy, it was unthinkable that an officer entrusted with the defense of West Point, New York, one of the war's key strategic military hardpoints, would forfeit his home and compatriots for the love of his own name and glory. When he was discovered, he retreated to Canada and then to London where he lived out his life, despised by Washington and the Continental Army as a traitor, and shunned even by British army officers living out his life in shame. But Jesus scorned the shame of the cross, and though despised and rejected, yet he endured every abuse and every sin of his enemies and friends. He endured their sin and our sin, even now. Every form of sin committed by humanity, Jesus endured, so that in every way we might be healed. Lamentations 2.13 says, Your wound is as deep as the sea. Who can heal you? For by his wounds we are healed. Healed from wounds physically, emotional wounds and mental. Healed in our spirit, even our character as he makes us new by his power at work within us. The power of his blood and his name make all things new by his healing. We are healed because the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. It is our grief and sin that he carried through time, mine. Until that day, it weighed until that day when it weighed heavily, finally, upon his mortal body on earth. And God was pleased to crush him upon the cross. There the darkness of all mankind killed him, and it was finished. It was finished there in the darkness, where the sky split over him, and the prince of life was killed and dead. It is finished for each of us. 
For we have each of us sentenced him to death. He was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he died the traitor's death that we deserve. So that by his death we would not suffer eternal agony. But that he purchased by his blood our ransom to life. So that with his last breath we could have a chance to know him. God through his son, brought the true light to a world in darkness, so that we would see and be drawn to him, the light, and so become light ourselves. Not that we would remain in shame, but trust him who bore our shame for us. Our glorious Lord took it willingly. No one compelled him, he said. He was not a helpless victim nor a reckless radical, but he knew just what he was doing until the last, just as God had planned it from eternity. And he did it all for each of us, for you, our champion of salvation. Let us, like Peter, who waited in the silence and stillness of Jesus' death on that long Saturday after he was crucified, let us, Take this time to reflect in stillness on Jesus' sacrifice as we partake of stillness and solitude in a unique time in history. May it cause us to remember the waiting of Jesus' disciples and the waiting of the world as our Savior lay in the grave. May we take the opportunity to reflect on what he gave to bring us healing from the curse that he bore that day. So begin the readings in this evening's service of shadows, this afternoon's service of shadows. The first, the shadow of betrayal. From Matthew 26, verses 20 through 25. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. This is a reading from a poem entitled Betrayal by Hester H. Comandale. Still as of old, men by themselves are priced. For 30 pieces, Judas sold himself, not Christ. The second shadow, the shadow of the agony of spirit and a rest. From Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 50. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with them, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it. 
may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with him, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Go at once to Jesus, Judas said. Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. A reading from a poem entitled A Ballad of Trees and the Master by Sidney Lanier. Into the woods my master went, clean forspent, forspent. Into the woods my master came, forspent with love and shame. But the olives, they were not blind to him. The little gray leaves were kind to him. The thorn tree had a mind to him when into the woods he came. Out of the woods my master went, and he was well content. Out of the woods my master came, content with death and shame. When death and shame would woo him last, from under the trees they drew him last. Twas on a tree they slew him last, when out of the woods he came. The third shadow, the shadow of denial, from Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 through 75. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again, and, it, and with an oath, I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them, for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken before, the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Reading from a poem, Judas Peter, by Lucy Shaw. Because we are all betrayers, taking silver and eating, body and blood, and asking, guilty, is it I? And hearing him say yes. It would be simple for us all to rush out and hang ourselves. But if we find grace to cry and wait after the voice of mourning has crowed in our ears, clearly enough to break our hearts, he will be there to ask us each again, do you love me? And now I invite you to sing with me the hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This?
The fourth shadow, the shadow of accusation. From Matthew chapter 27, verses 11 through 15, and 20 through 30. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him! Crucify him! Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw, he was getting nowhere. But that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. 
Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, king of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. Join with me in singing the hymn, O Sacred Head, Now Wounded. The fifth shadow, the shadow of crucifixion and humiliation. From Matthew chapter 27, 31 through 44. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They were off there. They offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. 
when they had crucified him. They divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. We'll now hear the beloved hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, by Jim Leanhard on the violin.
the sixth shadow, the shadow of death. From Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 through 54. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs were broken open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Now please join me in a responsory hymn, The Old Rugged Cross. Cross 
and exchange it some day for a crown. The seventh shadow, the shadow of burial. From Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 through 60. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. We'll now hear the beloved spiritual, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Sung by Pastor Harry Westberg. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him? I'd like to invite you to partake of a brief moment of silent meditation as we reflect on all that we've heard from the Gospel of Matthew and on the candle that represents Christ's life being extinguished in darkness.
We'll now hear a reading from a poem entitled Good Friday by Christina Rossetti. Am I a stone and not a sheep, that I can stand, O Christ, beneath thy cross, to number drop by drop thy blood's slow loss, and yet not weep? Not so those women loved, who with exceeding grief lamented thee, not so fallen Peter weeping bitterly, not so the thief was moved, not so the sun and moon, which hid their faces in a starless sky, a horror of great darkness at broad noon, I, only I. Yet give not o'er, but seek thy sheep, true shepherd of the flock, greater than Moses, turn and look once more, and smite a rock. And now I'd invite you to sing with me one final hymn, the second verse only of nothing but the blood. And let's sing it in meditation and reflective remembrance of the blood that Jesus shed for us. May Jesus Christ, who for our sakes became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you. Amen. I invite you now to observe leaving in silence until the chapel is vacant, until we have all left. 